Welcome to the Payments Canada Summit and thanks for being here today. I'm Christina Logue, CFO at Payments Canada, and I will be your host today while we discuss inclusive payments. Now, when we think about community giving, I'm pretty sure that touchless payments are not the first thing that pops into our minds, but that's what we're here for today, to bring these two seemingly disparate topics together and connect them. I expect our discussion will be less around the technology underlying the touchless payments or contactless payments and focus more around the idea of payments with purpose. Let's get into introductions and then straight to our discussion. But before that, I just would like to remind the audience to please use your chat box that you see on your screen to send us your questions. We'll be sure to save some time at the end of the session to answer as many as we can. Now, because we have a panel of many Chris's with us today, uh, we have agreed uh, beforehand that Chris Greenfield will be referred to as Greenfield for this session, uh, and Chris McIntosh will be referred to as Mac. So Greenfield, if we can start with you, if you don't mind walking us through a quick intro about yourself as well as your organization. Sure, thanks, Christina, and thanks for uh, having the Chris's on today. Um, it's funny that we're both named Chris because we actually uh, share a, a common philosophy and a, a drive with purpose. Um, I'm, I'm Chris Greenfield. I'm the CEO of TipTap. Um, our business is basically a completely touchless giving solution or touchless payment solution. And what we do is we essentially help charities and fundraising efforts collect more um, as cash and coin has really disappeared. Great. Thanks, Mac. Yeah, Chris McIntosh, I'm the president and chief product officer at Gigit. Uh, Gigit's a, an online platform that supports uh, engaging community members with, with local nonprofits, charities, foundations, uh, for the purposes of giving back in, in any way that they can. And we'll talk about those different ways. But uh, So our, our whole purpose is about uh, helping every nonprofit and charity uh, continue to connect with the community and, and grow that engagement more and more over time. Great. Thank you both. Uh, thanks for being here with us today. What I find really incredible is the story of how your two organizations found each other and really how they support each other. Uh, so I was wondering if you guys could just take us through a bit of your background and how TipTap and Gigit sort of discovered one another. And then maybe uh, if we can touch or dive into a bit of the synergies between these two companies and why they work so well together. And I'll I'll give you each an, a chance to sort of chime sure. in here. Sure, so I think uh, we, we've we met each other a couple of different ways is first, I think, as I mentioned, the shared philosophy to help in the community. Um, we actually have even shared uh, an employee uh, at one point in time, which was kind of interesting, but, uh, um, I think really what it was is we're a very much an impulse payment. So when people, and I, I'll just show you a quick shot of what we do so that you have an idea and you may have seen us with Salvation Army uh, this year. Um, but essentially we allow people to give with a quick impulse contactless payment tap, um, very, very simple. Um, doesn't take any decision, doesn't take any time. Um, it's it's almost easier than giving cash and coin because you don't even have to count out how much you're giving. And the charities like it because instead of getting, you know, the $3 or $2 in the pocket, they're getting $5. So that's always good. But we were looking to engage um, the donors further. And we were looking for a solution that would allow us to get monthly donations, um, but also in terms of engage the community. Um, get people to learn more about these organizations and potentially help them. And that's really where uh, we found Gigit um, by looking for a platform that could provide those services. Yeah, and it's funny how we did uh, on our side, you know, we, we TipTap was a little bit ahead of us in terms of an organization uh, time-wise. And so uh, we were introduced through, uh, of course, the one employee that, that was at our company um, and, and from that point on, we thought it was just a phenomenal uh, business. And we do happen to be geographically close to each other. Um, and for, for Gigit, you know, we're a, a platform that is the digital, we, we, we live in the digital world, helping 
uh, bring accessibility to you know every organization, whether it be three people or a thousand people, uh, raising five thousand dollars a year or or millions of dollars a year. Um, and TipTap is the perfect extension into the real world of what we do, and and really giving that holistic approach to each organization. And so, uh, the moment we saw it, we thought brilliant. Um, idea and, and a perfect type of partner that could only facilitate um, other pain points that the same organizations uh, that we work with, um, TipTap works with, and so it, it made sense from from day one. Yeah, I think the the cool thing about Mac and his team too is they were willing just to jump in and try something right away, where you don't. Thankfully, we were both startups and we had that desire to just try something to help others and. Uh, we started with a program that we're doing out in Kitchener-Waterloo to help with the homelessness that's out there. That's expanding into other programs that we're doing together with the likes of the United Way, probably the Salvation Army, um, community food banks, um, as well as our larger homelessness program we're doing later this year. So it, it, it was nice that not only did we have the purpose philosophy, but we kind of had the the business mentality and how to approach it uh, collaboratively as well. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll double that. You know, in the sense of 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 what we try to do, and Christina, you mentioned trying to do things that go beyond the technology. Uh, I think that's a a core principle of what we both do. In the sense that you know we're, we both have have experienced teams that are deep in 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 technology offerings. Uh, but it's it, these two companies are much more than that. And when we, when we talk about what we do. Uh, as a company, uh, similar to what TipTap does, it, it generally leaves the conversation quickly of what's technology. Technology is really the enabler, but um, bringing accessibility to uh, a market that typically is is sort of deprived of, you know, world class solutions to help move their causes forward and and revolutionary things that help move their causes forward. Um, you know, the change that you actually make, and, and we'll probably reference it a few times, but when we look even at, um, you know. Greenfield, the, the post you just had, right, of, of the lemonade stand. It, it, it's something that we share that it's not always about trying to raise $10 million for a cause. It can it can be as small as that, and engagement can come in so many different ways. Um, and so using technology to engage communities at a different level is something that I think communities are are, are sort of striving for and want these days, um, and, and so do the organizations that, that benefit from that. That's great. And I think um, one thing I just want to dive into, um, staying on this theme of your shared philosophy and, and how you guys both think about uh, community and charitable giving. Um, I had the pleasure of, of hearing you guys during a, a pre-call and this notion, I think this philosophy you share around that payments really are the catalyst for community giving and that charity is really the driver for social change. So. I was wondering if you guys wanted to take some time and expand a little bit on your views in this area. Um, and further to that, you started to touch on it a little bit, Mac, um, before, but let's start to, to talk about some of the pain points that you see when it comes to payments and charitable giving. Yeah, yeah I can take start there if you like. Uh, you know, certainly, I, I think it's something that I, uh, you know, from from our perspective, when we look at how we grew our business over the last four years um you know we sound fairly new but we did spend sort of an, an extended period if you will um spending time in the market and and working through what it was available with uh, different solutions in in the sector and, and what was available to nonprofits and whatnot and as we did that we started to recognize a couple things you know uh, to your point about charity being the driver of social change i think it's true i think we we forget that quite often these days that um you know charity is not always just about raising the dollars um, there's a lot you know you can give in many ways you can engage in many ways that will result in more dollars being raised uh, and that's that's sort of the angle that, that we take is that engagement is a community effort uh, social change is a community effort it, it it's not always uh, you know geared towards one metric and so how do we provide those avenues and make it easy you know, something that tip tap has done incredibly well right as, as they really unlocked that um, specific to the tap and how do we unlock that you know in our world is, is is also how do you make it easier for people to give volunteer time you know how do we make it easier to bring it all into one place um, and then make it meaningful long term right and, and grow on it and so you know 
there's a lot of one and done, right? There's a lot of, I, I volunteered my hours in high school, I'm done, or I've done five hours, I'm done. Uh, how do we capture those people that do care, that do want to make a difference, but just don't feel like it's easy enough these days? Um, you know, you don't have a ton of time in our schedules. Uh, we have to make it as easy as we can to give and donate like TipTap has done, but to also donate your time and make an impact in different ways uh, and, and really build a community around that. And so that's that's sort of our mission and vision. And and this again, you'll know, we'll speak to it lots of times, uh, can only be done with partners. It, it can't be one partner doing it all. And, and that's why this has been such a great partnership with TipTap is that they've really unlocked that um, that real pain of, of in-world giving. And it doesn't always mean the one example, I'm sure, like you said, Greenfield, of, of change, you know, in your pocket and things like that. When we talk about the types of events we run, the traditional types of events, uh, the world has changed. You know, the traditional gala um, that you're probably used to 24 months ago or 18 months ago could benefit extremely from having tip tap devices and making that easier for people at a, a live event um, and to do things like that, but also to bring in the virtual live stream capabilities that that we bring for for these types of galas, it, it's really an evolving world. And and our goal, and I think our job as technology uh, innovators in this space is is to continually focus on making accessibility uh, and ease and knocking down the barriers for for social change. Yeah, I I think Mac, it's totally right. I think the the you, making the user experience is definitely something that can uh, make a change. But I think just the what is payments? You know, a lot of people in the industry assumes that payments only re, is about fiat, right? But it, it it's also about it could be loyalty points, it could be time, it could be uh, broker like uh, bartering, um, etc. And really what's happened is over the last number of years and even with COVID is we've seen an incredible disappearance of cash and coin. And when you start thinking about it, how many people actually rely on cash and coin? Um, a lot of people used cash and coin obviously because it's easy, it's easy value transfer. You know, it's an easy way to give someone, if you're not able to give them time or if you're not able to give them uh, you know, support or something else, you can at least give them some kind of value transfer. But with cash going away, you don't, you can't tip your valet, you can't give to the panhandler, you can't even give it to the young kid down the street trying to raise money for a service dog. And this is actually a program that we did for uh, Jackson. He's a, a young kid out of the Kitchener Waterloo area. And he started with his little snack stand and trying to raise money for a service dog. But how many times had people walked by him and said, sorry, I have no change. So what we've done is a lot of those people don't have change, but then there's a lot of those people that are just using that as an excuse not to engage. Well, we've kind of removed that excuse. So by removing that one, by providing that one type of payment, which is the, the easy tap contactless payment, we've actually become a catalyst for engagement into that cause. They have to pause and take a moment to see what this Jackson's doing, where he's trying to help as a seven-year-old, and hopefully that'll stimulate some response from the individual, but maybe it'll tell a story, a broader story um, around the community about, you know, payments can help individuals like this, um, helping others. Uh, we're doing programs with the homeless, um, but it's the people helping the homeless. It's not the homeless uh, directly um, because we still haven't, that's still a bit of a, it's a hard challenge to uh, allow them to, to accept tap payment at this point, even though I don't know if you guys are up and down the gardener, but you'll see the one guy that says he's got his sign and says, I accept Visa, MasterCard and American Express, and he'll pull out his, uh, his square terminal, but there's not a lot of, uh, that didn't last for long because there wasn't a lot of trust and understanding. So what, what our solution does for giving and for the community, along with our partners at, at Visa and Interact and, and MasterCard is we're able to provide that trust and understanding um, that people are reassured that the uh, monies that they're giving are actually going to the cause that has been identified. So. 
I think we're just a catalyst for that communication, a catalyst for that understanding. And that's by offering a, a easy payment um, and an impulse payment. And how do you, like talking about engagement and engaging the communities, how do you think about continuous engagement or repeat engagement? And how do your, how do your organizations tackle that? Uh, a repeat engagement with our customers? Is that yeah. Right? Yeah, so I think um, I'll, I'll take you back to uh, um, even the Salvation Army example is, you know, we we started with a very, um, they wanted to learn before they expanded and we started with them with a very short uh, program. Um, and it was very basic. It was a very uh, a payment exercise. Now we've expanded that program, obviously, with them last year and we're going to continue to do so. But now it's, well, what else can we do, right? Where else can we go with that? So, for example, I'll, I'll give you an example of a program that we're doing. And it's out in Kitchener-Waterloo. And in Kitchener-Waterloo, they have um, an area called the Better Tent City. And it started off with uh, a collection of tents inside a, an old manufacturing plant that wasn't being used. And it was uh, started by a man by the name of Ron Doyle, who's, who's unfortunately passed on. Um, but he had a vision to help those who needed help the most. So what he had to give, the payment he was able to make was actually providing them a space that wasn't being used. And they would come and they would set their tents up in there. It would be warm. They would have protection from the elements. But they also had a common place to prepare meals together, to shower and laundry facilities, kind of the basic necessities of life. And that just kind of turned into, okay, well, there's, you know, they had 20 some odd people within this area. It's like, well, how do we take them to the next step? And the next step was actually building these tiny homes, which you can see one on our trailer at the Kitchener Market. It launched yesterday. Um, we actually were honored. We got the Fergermeister or the, uh, the mayor to uh, tap with us. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to raise money for the homes. Um, and they now have about 50 homes. So 50 people are there. Um, fathers are able to see their kids because now the mothers feel good that they can actually bring the kids to a safe place to see their fathers. Um, there's regular treatment, there's sanitary facilities, there's garbage collection. It, it's a well-organized community. It's run by them. It's run by former journalists, former school teachers, former small business owners. And we've really kind of pushed around this campaign and to help the homeless because they're very misunderstood. So we wanted to kind of further that engagement and engage the community a bit further so what we ended up doing is i'm not sure if you can actually see it but right here on the i don't know if you can see my mouse or not but uh there's uh right underneath the the mayor's arm there there's actually a qr code and what that qr code does is it triggers the uh gigit platform so people are able to engage from an impulse nature they're able to gain interest in the cause or the purpose they're able to make a small payment. If they want to make a larger payment or a larger contribution, they go to the Gigit platform, which I'll let uh, I'll let Mac kind of talk a little bit more about how that's, from my perspective, the Gigit platform has allowed us to, um, it, it's kind of like that funnel where you start with a small funnel and then it, it's enormous. And the the volunteering potential, the auction potential, the donation potential, the um, like we we had volunteers coming to our and they're scheduled for the next three weeks uh, to help tour with the tiny home and support the community. We have guys from Vancouver. We're running a program out in Vancouver and Toronto this fall, and one of the guys actually built some of these homes, and now he's going to be participating in our Vancouver program where. We're looking San Francisco, New York City. Um, we've had corporate sponsors and corporate supporters looking for us to expand the program down there as well. So that's all a result of a small 
payment solution or a small giving solution just being the catalyst to something that can really become big and then giga has really become the facilitator for that so we're we're really excited to see where it's going to go but i'll let mac uh, talk a little bit about giga and how it's helped us yeah it's great i mean the whole time you were going there i was i was taking my own notes about that bit that it, it really is that how do we take not just repeat engagement like you said christina but but like like greenfield just mentioned you know how do you convert the impulse uh you know that impulse transaction into something more and how do you break down that barrier? So, you know, I'll, I'll admit though, I am guilty of being one of those people that never has cash. And I, I go back to my car sometimes, right, for the, the cadets and, the, and everyone who's, if, if, if someone's willing to stand in the rain and raise money for that cause, you know, I'm going to go and find it. But it's, it is hard sometimes. And so if we can minimize those barriers, how do we continue to take that further and move from the impulse to what more can you do? And, and again, continuing that conversation that more isn't always more money. I could have had an impulse tap and then said, oh, but I can also volunteer for this opportunity and get involved in this community. How do I do that? Um, and that's where we see ourselves complementing the tip tap solution so so well is is that, uh, you know, we work more on the like to the back end, you know, the sort of hidden side, if you will, from some of that in terms of. Um, but if we want to, how does the organization, right, the nonprofit and the foundations and the charities, um, they want to also see how can they take that impulse and turn it into someone who who can be a part of the change right who can be more involved in in the in the, the longer term approach to that change and so whether that's volunteering donating a larger amount that might involve tax receding and things like that and the benefits of that um but also um sponsoring uh, it can be um you know supporting them through through merchandise so, so the, the tools that we give to the organizations um, here just is that extension, right? Right from that impulse to to what more does the organization or the cause have to offer in ways that you can support them, um, and then and then for that along. And, and I think it's important as we talk about knocking down barriers. Um, you know, our goal here too is you know on our end we we keep our platform you know free that you know so that there's no big large upstart costs to any of these types of projects. We want to make sure that that. If somebody I saw a question there, you know, how do we bring this to our community? It's really yeah. um, for both of us. It's really it's really talk to them and and, and just more awareness because yeah. uh, one of the largest challenges, and I don't know Greenfield how how if you've seen this, but you know, one of ours is we looked in the space and and our our group came out of of building enterprise solutions, you know, sort of in a for profit world, and coming here into this product has has changed our world in terms of of being able to feel good about what we're doing. But one of the largest mm -hmm. challenges we saw was an underserviced software market and an overpriced one too. And, and and you're trying to facilitate the growth of these causes, the change and the social change. We can't, in, the cost can't be the barrier to raising more money. It just seems so backwards. And so um, making everything that we do accessible to every sized organization, big or small, it, it, it has to be a, a foundational component to it, um, it, it and, and in order for it to, to truly succeed, I think. Yeah. And Mac, it's funny, I'm seeing the comments come through and some of them are like, how can I be a part and that kind of thing. And it's like, well, you, you can go to uh, tiptapfoundation.com. Um, it's got a link to the Gigit platform. If you're local, you can can volunteer. Um, you can also make a payment if you'd like. Um, but the other thing you can do is if you're in other areas across the country, if you're in Edmonton or Calgary or Vancouver or Moose Jaw or anywhere, and you see someone in, in need or you see someone struggling with collecting for their charity, we can help. And we operate under two premise. We have a, a for-profit company, which is Tip Tap uh, Pay Micropayment Systems. We service transit venues, festivals and events. We service large charities, et cetera. But we have another not-for-profit, which is the Tip Tap Foundation. And the Tip Tap Foundation supports the things that our employees and us as a company care about. And the main one is around ending homelessness. So we've actually made a contribution to the, the Tip Tap Foundation of a million dollars is our commitment this year to spend towards that program. And we're doing that so that the community, any money that the community gives to the, the homelessness program, 100% of those proceeds go to those that are helping those in need. 
so there and i'm i'm not sure but i think it might be the first or the only uh hundred percent program um in canada where all proceeds are are given back so we're excited to do that um and that's how we've kind of made the distinction between the the two companies the the cause company is really the the epitome of our purpose and the for-profit company subsidizes their rates for our devices um, so that they can help more people out and by more people using our for-profit allows us to make more money that just means we can help more causes as well so and Christine, if you don't mind me addressing one point, I see a few questions about how can for-profit businesses and in the community sort of help and facilitate this. And I think it's a really interesting point. Um, and, and Greenfield, correct me too if I'm wrong here, right? But you know, as as we see, you know, there's a lot of ways in which we're working in that space as well in terms of connecting the traditional for-profit space to the nonprofit world, uh, because there is a lot to offer and has traditionally been another barrier in the space in, in terms of even offering those services that are are sometimes not available to those organizations. But when it comes to a, an easy one, a, a, you know, when we look at some of the, the programs that we're looking to, to start kicking off as well in some of our campaigns with TipTap, is, is sort of accessibility to, to, uh, to space, right? To market share, to, you know, if you're a for-profit business um, that doesn't support directly your own foundation like um, TipTap has, um, but you wanna support a cause, you wanna support a local charity, uh, putting that tip tap device in your space to your customers is an easy way to do that. It, it doesn't mean you have to really have a, a large, you know, relationship with the charities and nonprofits and whatnot, but it's again, providing accessibility to a market that maybe the charity doesn't have, um, is your own customer base, your own client base. Yeah. It, it's funny, Mac, cause what we've actually done and it, it just you talking through it just kind of made me realize is, we've actually used the the gigit platform for our own csr program like we don't have somebody running our, our social responsibility program um we're actually the the gigit platform is almost doing it for us because it's asking for volunteers it's letting people know where the events are where they can participate it's letting people know the activity that's going on and it's you know it's we're a small organization like we're less than 50 people and um when you look at at uh we can if we can start a, a csr program literally overnight um and help others why wouldn't everybody do it like it's uh it's a relatively yeah. simple thing to do to Man, that is and, uh, you know we built gigit like a social platform as we start to roll out the community impact score is the key to our platform um, as we realize it, and as Greenfield saying, that's one of the things that we are seeing a huge impact in is is connecting those corporate uh, responsibility programs in the sense that you know instead of having to get all your employees together and go out on Saturday and do it together and find that event and it's a big production, you know how do we tap into people's I need kind of hence the name gig you know or or play on the sort of gig economy but in all lots of different aspects and one of those is. How do we get what people want to do innately in their own lives, that the way they want to give back? If I want to go and volunteer with my daughter on the weekend or raise money for my son's baseball team, um, these are all things that are still giving back to our community and making an impact. But it's really hard to realize what the the, the, the size of that is and how it rolls up into our communities. Um, and so by providing that that accessibility and the way we track it, as Greenfield's saying, we track what people do from a, your profile on our platform, you know, like LinkedIn is your business profile, Facebook is your social profile, Gigit is your social impact profile. Um, and we track your, you know, volunteer hours. Uh, obviously, we don't, we're not portraying to the world, you know, how much you've donated to people, but we track your good deeds, you know, in terms of how the scoring system of what you've done through time, talent, treasure, and how you've made an impact on that community. And we provide that impact information back to the organizations that say you know what is your community done so when you see that email from an rbc or a td or some large corporation saying look at what our employees have done this year uh, we provide that just by you know what people do on their own in the platform volunteer um work with tip tap or other charities on the platform and help facilitate that and so again it's, it's all about uh that that same conversation christina about continuing to turn from impulse to change and 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 opening the doors every in every section along the way to make sure that uh, people don't just give up at any point because of 
you know, accessibility or effort and, and making it as seamless and quick as possible uh, to give in any way that you can. So, so it, it's funny, I just saw a comment come up and um, depending on the bank branches that uh, we had somebody asking if we wanted to get a tap terminal in our bank branches to allow clients to give to a specific charity, um, you know, con contact us. Um, you guys can email me directly at chris at tiptappay.com um, or you can uh, curious at tiptappay.com if you want to have some fun with the email. Um, in terms of we actually do have programs for uh, bank branches and um, uh, uh, groups with locations and it allows you to support not only potentially the local community but also national programs that you might be doing. So. For example, if you're supporting United Way as that's your CSR program across the country, you could have United Way being supported for a period of a month. And then the, the next month, regionally, you can support your regional or local food bank um, or your local baseball team or whatever you might want to do. And we're doing programs like this with Rotary, with the community foundations. We are doing it with um, some banking partners as well. So please feel free to, to contact me. Um, we're here to help and we're here to hopefully help those that need it the most. So please feel free to do that. So, sorry, Christine. No, it's all right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for offering uh, your own personal email out there. Um, I think like keeping my eye on some of these comments too, and there's a common theme here of like, this is like people are blown away. This is so inspirational. Um, I have to think that over the past 12, 15 months, COVID has only accelerated not only the need for these types of platforms, but just in general for the type of work that you guys are doing, like that great work out there in the community. So do you have any thoughts or can you share with us any thoughts on what, like what your vision is for what the next horizon of change will look like or, or what does progress look like in your world uh, where we've seen such an acceleration so far? Yeah, I, I think for us is our our ultimate goal um, is really to optimize our the collections of our partners, of our customers. So that means not only are we helping them stimulate giving um, in as many acceptance locations as possible to maximize their revenues, what we're also trying to do is we're trying to minimize their costs. So how can we make our, our displays and our, our signage and our posters uh, less expensive for them? How can we create multi-year deals with them so that the capital costs are spread out um, or really become nothing? Um, how do we get those, those charities that maybe don't have the upfront funding, how can we work creatively with them on a contract that allows collections to to pay for the devices. You know, we we want to make it easy for people to participate. We want it, it, it to be easy for people to give to the causes they, they care about. So over the next, like really what we did largely this year is we optimized our different display concepts and signage work to minimize the costs for us. And then we lowered our prices to our customers around that. Um, we've made the programs really easy. We're securing more and more um, partnerships that are giving us uh, less expensive operating costs. And we want to continue to do that with the charity and fundraising sector, which is obviously our primary focus. But what we're seeing is a, a huge amount of demand within venues, festivals and events for parking, entry, um, we're even doing ferries and buses and that kind of thing um, in transit. But but vending solution, we, we interesting, we have this one um, Notre Dame Cathedral, I think you guys are probably familiar with it. Um, we have a tap terminal that actually lights candles in that uh, facility. We have a, another tap terminal that makes it so you can look through the uh, viewing glasses at, uh, um, Niagara Falls and the CN Tower. So um, walkers, all of that. So what, what we want to continue to do is kind of facilitate the ease of payment. And then that becomes the, the revenue generating systems that allow us to make the ease of giving 
easier and less expensive for those. So at the end of the day, our long-term vision is on helping as many charities and people as possible. Um, but obviously we have to have a mixed business model to get there. I guess, and from our perspective, uh, COVID was was very interesting. You know, for a company that uh, came out of beta and into production during COVID, it was quite an experience. You know, and we did find that uh, our 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 mission and our goal was, I guess, timely, if you will, uh, in in what we were doing. In the sense that, um, but because we do provide to the organizations, you know, that sort of all in one holistic approach of, of accessibility to world class software, right? So we're a full CRM donor management, volunteer management, events and management. Uh, we we did see a dip in the volunteer programs, of course. They all got shut down aside from the ones that were able to continue to, to provide critical services. And so, you know, we, we were able to, to continue to provide more in the virtual fundraising space and, and really give uh, charities more options to get through. And, and like Greenfield just mentioned, it's about lowering that cost it is a critical thing you know as a software company you never want cost to be your differentiator but it is a critical one in this space it, it is something that that we need accessibility is maybe the better word but but by lowering that cost and accessibility to the tools that charities need more than ever right now coming out of COVID to to a, a, a hammered industry in terms of, of of getting through it finding every which way that they could uh continue their their causes through that they had to be nimble. They had to be creative. You know, we saw a very quick shift from, well, we're just going to delay all the events to we need to figure out how to do this no matter what. Uh, mm -hmm. And our job is and our goal is to facilitate in any way whatsoever to continue to to break the barriers of social change. And, and, and our job is to remove the barrier of technology and costs, of course, and accessibility. And so our, our goal in the future here as we go is, is really um, as we talk about community impact scores and rolling that up, meaning rolling that up to the, the regions, rolling that up to geographical centers, rolling that up to the world. Our goal is to build a platform that engages every community member across the world uh, to do more whether, and, and finally be able to engage at whatever small, easy transaction that is for you. And that if we do that across the world in all of those different ways, whether it's our volunteering, whether it's our tapping on a device, uh, whether it's becoming a long-term donor, and whether it's really truly getting involved with an organization um, that that these types of solutions together and especially building a partner ecosystem to do it uh, will will finally help us you know push the barrier of social change which you know we see feel stuck in the mud sometimes that we're all trying to do it but we need these kinds of solutions at that kind of scale to really drive social change yeah it's it's funny, I, we, Mac and I, we share uh, an acronym that we, we realized on a call a couple months ago. And like any of us need another acronym, um, but we talk about being simple, easy, fast, and effective um, in really everything we do operationally, but making sure that it's the same for our customers. And it's something that Mac uh, does as well with his team and his platform. So being that facilitator to change that facilitator to the cause, I think is something that we something that we definitely share. And that's why it's kind of brought the two solutions together because in that journey, we make sense at a certain part of that journey. And then Max platform makes sense at that other part of that journey. And what we help is for people to go through that in a simple, easy, fast and effective manner, resulting in higher collections for our customers. That's great. Um, and speaking about sort of all the change that's happened over the past year and a bit and, and sort of being on the tail end of that now, hopefully coming out of it uh, shortly, um, and not from a payments perspective, but just from community giving and, and social change. Do you have any thoughts or do you want to share your thoughts on, on what the biggest potential challenges are going to be uh, in this space coming out of COVID? Um, I, I would say that probably over... Um, the last year it's been survival um you know it, luckily we've seen some some good uh contributions and large contributions to these different organizations they've seen their demand for services go up well over 600 percent um but they've seen their their donation revenues drop significantly especially like cash obviously is gone and events is gone and that kind of thing and it's um you know, there's there's some are filing for uh, bankruptcy protection. There's others that are shutting down completely. Um, 
So I think survival is going to be the biggest challenge, but there has been parties that have stood up and helped these groups out. So I, I think now it's, it's going to be now up to the community. It's going to be now up to us as individuals. If we've been able to survive this, we need to help others recover from this. So whether that's, you know, eating out at restaurants every night when they open up and tipping those guys as much as you can afford, do it because it's going to help all of us kind of move forward. I think it's the same when you you see those people that might need that tiny little bit of help, um, whether it's the, you know, the old lady help across the street or whether it's the guy in the corner just needs somebody to ask him how his day is or, you know, um, how'd you get here and have that listening ear. Um, if we as individuals, um, and collectively can kind of come together to help prop everyone up. I think that's going to be the the biggest thing that we need to see. I absolutely agree. I think uh, it what what we've seen through this is uh, I think people are tired and people have the innate response in people right now is that they do want to come together and and come out of this collectively. And you'll see that both of us are involved in a in a national fundraiser a little bit later in the year in the fall. And, and the entire concept of that national fundraiser is Canadians coming together to build communities back together, you know, and, and then it's going to take everybody to do that. And I think that uh, I do think it's a positive note that, you know, as we start to come out of it, if we can look at it through a positive lens and say, this is the opportunity, you know, everyone wants to make a difference. And, and it, it does sound like it's at an all time high, whether that's like I said, you saw the volunteering, um, you know, in the sense of volunteer programs were shut down, but you could see the, the, the desire of many individuals through COVID putting their own volunteer groups together in the Facebook groups that were happening. And, um, people want to give back. I, and I, and I do believe that at the, you know, inside most people that's there, the desire is there. There's just a lot of barriers traditionally. And I think that what COVID did was, um, if there was a positive to bring away from the last 24 months is that it has forced people to be more creative and think about the ways we can break those barriers. And, you know, virtual being one of those, you know, it, as if we didn't think that we could do virtual fundraising 24 months ago, and yet everybody thinks that that is now critical going forward as, as part of their, their, their model. And I think that, it, you know, sometimes you need a big jolt to go in the right direction and just, you know, stop coming up with the excuses. And I think now um, there's an opportunity here for every community, small and large, to come together and, and make, um, significant change to bring back this sector. And I think that people do want to do it. If if we can come together from a technology perspective and provide those solutions to make that as easy as possible, I think we're going to see a, a, a resurgence in that space because I do think that um, people do want to do this and they do want to help. And we just have to give them the ways to do that as easy as we can. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think we could probably continue carrying on talking about this probably all afternoon, but I want to make sure we uh, save some time for some questions. And Greenfield, I wanted to give you the floor for a few moments before we move into questions. Um, I'm actually gonna, I started on the wrong slide here, but what I wanted to do is just kind of um, do the announcement and the reveal of how a small little payments company like us is planning on making massive change. Um, we're obviously starting with the Kitchener Waterloo and the Better Tent City, um, but every single city has a different reason for why their people are homeless. So we're starting a campaign um, in the fall called See It, Face It, End It. And the idea around this is you, you need to see it, you need to comprehend it and understand really what's going on. You have to get beyond the stereotypes to really understand why these people are in this situation and how they can be helped. You can't do it from behind a desk and you can't do it by forcing them into a system that you think is um, working and it's proven that it's not. What you need to do is you need to take the time to see it, face it, understand a little bit, know what's going on, and then work with others to end it. And what we're doing is in each city we're going to be in, there's six major causes of homelessness. So um, we're looking to address the cause in that city by giving to those people that help the most. So um, 
I, I don't have the time. I'm sure most of the people on this call don't have the time to be out there helping these people as much as they need. But what they can do is they can help those people that are doing that. And that's not necessarily the large organizations. It's the small groups. So what we're doing this fall is we actually have, it's, it's almost like a live reporting team um, that's going out and they're, they're helping out the individuals in need based off of what they need, whether it's you know warm clothes, shelter, some food, maybe some counseling, maybe some medical treatment, um, maybe just a, a, a voice to hear. Um, we're gonna identify the locations where homelessness has been in your community. You're gonna see this on your, your sidewalks and, and on the street. So you know that it's affecting people within your community. It could easily affect your, your neighbors. It could affect a lot of people we've talked to. It's been sons and daughters. You know, We've had uh, professionals and business owners that have just basic varying circumstances. A mother with two kids, you know, still taking her kids to school every single day, but all three of them living off the back of a bicycle. Um, these are the stories that people don't look at. They don't see it because they're too busy thinking that um, the, the stereotypes is really what all the homeless people are and they're not. So when we're out there on the street and we're actually making change and helping these people, we're gonna be live broadcasting this at Young and Dundas Square. It's gonna be on Instagram live. This is all through uh, donated out of home media. And this will be a, a live showcase of where we're actually helping the city and community. And this is, is obviously a Toronto centric photo, but we're doing this in Vancouver. And now we've been asked to look at New York City and San Francisco as well um, by some, some partners. Um, we are still looking for more partners, people that are offering up locations, people that are offering up media, people that can offer up sponsorship. Um, so like we said, you can make payments, you can make donations in different ways. Just let us put some devices in your branches. Let us put some devices in your office space. You know, Make this part of your CSR program and give us some more of your time or actually tap and make a donation. Um, the TTCs involved, they're gonna be giving us some space and we have some of the large uh, real estate uh, holders within the cities that are supporting us as well. Um, and this is really activating media. So it's taking media and putting it into something that people can actually act on and give back right away. So as soon as they have the impulse, they have the ability to give and act on that impulse. We're, we have OCAD, the University of Toronto are also doing, um, they're gonna be doing some art installations for us um, and some different projects. And we have the group, the architecture group at, at U of T. They've come out and seen uh, a better tent city, figuring out ways that maybe they can create communities or um, tiny homes is a bad word in Toronto, um, but maybe they can provide some kind of communal living rather than putting people all in shelters. You put people with, with problems, with people that don't have problems, soon it becomes those people's problems as well. And what a better tent city or the, these types of communal living arrangements do is it allows people to have the support, but also have the space they need to address their the challenges they have. Um, and we're, like I said, we're looking for partners that are gonna see it, face it, end it with us. Um, and we're, we've got kits that we're gonna be distributing to these partners where they can donate back um, and their, their patrons can donate for that partner to give potentially clothing, potentially food. Um, we want to do a, a big spaghetti dinner under the gardener uh, with Uber Eats and, uh, you know, put a big red and white tablecloth under there and, and feed 20 people with one installation. And that's what we're hoping to do. So if anybody has any interest in terms of helping us out, um, sponsoring us, providing us locations, or um, so otherwise just volunteering and supporting the cause, please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Oh, that was great. Thank you, Chris. Um, thanks for taking the time to walk us through that. Um, so I'm just, I'm going through the questions. We only have a few moments left. I think we've 
you guys have done a great job of kind of addressing them on the fly as we've seen things come through. I would say one common theme I'm seeing come through is a real, um, and if it was intentional or not on your parts, there, there was seem to have been a call to action here and everybody wants to, to jump in and help out here right now. So um, I'll just let you talk for a few more minutes, just remind people again, like how do we get involved? I know you gave your email address, Greenfield, but like, is this truly these platforms accessible to everyone? Uh, there was reference to like, could a panhandler use something like this? How do we, how do we get this up and running um, and get it across the country for you? Yeah, I, I think um, obviously one of the challenges within payments is also the, um, the things that are in place to protect us. So the anti-money laundering, the KYC, these kind of protocols, and those are definitely required. Um, we're small value transactions. We're $2, $5, $10, um, but we still have to adhere to those same uh, protocols. So we have to have um, a reputable individual or a reputable company that can be identified uh, to carry the devices. We are working with buskers, but what we're doing is we're typically working with the buskers group or the buskers association, providing them the devices, and then they provide them to their buskers accordingly. Um, the same thing, um, panhandlers, you're, it's, you're not typically going to be giving them uh, a terminal, but what you can do is you can put a collection location close to them that is solving an issue in that area. And that's really what we're looking to do is we we actually have been thinking about actually hiring a few of the panhandlers, paying them more than minimum wage and um, allowing them to collect on behalf of themselves from others. Um, so we are exploring those ways. But again, it, it, we're trying to make sure that we're addressing the issue with the non stereotypical um, kind of perception of the homeless. So, but in terms of uh, ways to help is um, locations, uh, you know, providing us uh, connections and, and leads to, and just suggesting us to people. Um, we're able to service uh, a large number of organizations. We have a very automated platform um, and it, it's a relatively low cost. So there, there was a question in there in terms of charities uh, are sensitive to, uh, but we're, we're the lowest cost on the market. We're seeing at least, if not like typically more than 900% ROI um, on our programs. It, it's pretty incredible. So um, yeah, please feel free to spread the word um, and direct people to how we can help them. And I think Max probably got the same same mantra. Yeah, but. yeah absolutely. You know, it's uh, it's it's easy to get a hold of us in tr in terms of your question, Christina. Yeah, our, our platform is available to any charity out there, any any nonprofit out there. It doesn't have to be charity status, nonprofit, charity, foundation uh, that wants to have better technology to to fuel their cause. Uh, don't worry about contracts that you're already in. Don't worry about software you're already using. Uh, it's free to use. Uh, it's transaction based to answer the question of how does how does Gigit stay alive? Um, and that's our goal is that those and we give lots of flexibility to the charity to who who pays for the, the small transaction fee that would be similar to when you go to Eventbrite and buy a ticket on Eventbrite that there's a fee that go either paid by the person buying the ticket or consumed off of the price of what goes to the, the charity. Uh, and so we give lots of flexibility there. So there's 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 no fear, there's no cost to enter, there's no uh, there's no contracts, there's no long term commitments. You know we've made it as simple as easy. So if you just want to come to Gate, it's a post volunteer opportunities to get more people to your cause. Great. If you want to run a worldwide virtual fundraising uh, organ, you know uh, virtual fundraising event, you could online auctions. You know so so we're we're everything from CRM to your your front facing tools, um, and you can use it as much or as little as you like. And and there's no barrier to entry for anybody. Uh, it's easy to get a hold of me as well. Um, but gigitmarketplace.com is the website, and I'm easy. It's Chris at gigitmarketplace.com, and of course, uh, we would obviously be connecting you to TipTap as well. And so, any way that we can help anyone, if you're talking to any charity or nonprofit, it's the same as Greenfield said. Awareness is the challenge for any company, like both of our sizes. I think we have tremendous solutions to offer and and help every organization out there. Uh, it's just about getting them to know that we're here.
Great. Thank you both Greenfield and Max so much. This has been an absolute pleasure for me to host this conversation today. Uh, thank you to our audience for the great engagement and participation. Um, and I just hope everyone stays healthy and stay safe and enjoy your weekend. Thanks so much, Christina. Appreciate it. Thank you, Christina.